Lord, we just want you. It's not what you can offer that we want tonight, Jesus. It's not your blessings that we want tonight, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. We want you to show up in our lives, Father. We want you to be made the center of our hearts. We thank you, Father, for your presence, and we ask, Lord, that you would never leave us. We thank you, Father, that this, that this moment can last forever. We don't have to leave your presence. We thank you, God. And as, we, as I speak, Lord, speak through me tonight. We ask, Lord, you'd speak to us. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to our situations, Father. You know everyone's heart in here today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello, everybody. Worship team, you guys could stay up here. You guys are staying up here. Um, you guys are welcome to sit. You guys could keep playing. Let's keep playing the music. But you guys are welcome to sit where you are or go back to your seats. I'm going to speak for just 10 minutes, and we're going to continue to worship. Um, but before I speak, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me where I've been. Um, almost every time I see someone, that's the first question they ask me. So just to clear that up, I've been here. I've not, I didn't move somewhere else. I've been here. I strained my vocal cords like two months ago, so I wasn't able to sing, and um, the doctor told me to rest. Um, so I'm, I'm here tonight. I sang a little bit, but I'm still supposed to be on vocal rest. Um, but tonight I want to share something that God put on my heart for us to, to learn about, and it's about God's presence. So I'm going to talk about just a few things you need to know about God's presence. And the first thing you need to know is that you were created to live in God's presence. And just like this song is saying, we don't have to leave his presence. It doesn't just last for a moment. It's not just in a song. It's not just in this moment. It's not just in, it's, it's not just in what he gives. It's not, it's not that. It's, it's forever. You're created to live in his presence. And we know that because when we look at God's original design for us, he created Adam to live in the Garden of Eden. And in other translations, it's the Garden of the Lord or his presence. So we were created to live in that place, right? And the only thing that separated us from, from God was our sin, right? When, the, when Eve and Adam sinned, that's what separated them and kicked them out of the presence of God. And some of you guys may have been like Eve, and you were deceived into thinking a life apart from God was, was the good life, was the life that you wanted. And now you're trapped in this, this cycle, trapped in this lifestyle that you didn't want. And you don't know how to get out of it. You don't know how to get back to where you used to be or get back to God's presence where you belong. Or maybe you're like Adam where you know better. And some of you guys may have grown up in church or you've, you've heard a sermon or two and you know better. You know that you know God's presence. Adam knew God. He walked with God, right? He talked with God. He lived with him. He did everything with God on earth. He dwelled in his presence. So he knew God, and he still chose that sin. But no matter who you are today, no matter what mistakes you've made in the past or even yesterday, no matter who you are, God is calling you back to his presence tonight. And God's not... God's not afraid of what you did. He knows, exact, he knows where you are. He knows your heart, and he knows, he knows what you've been through. It's not a surprise to him. So there's nothing you can do that his love cannot cover, that, his, 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 um, that Jesus' death cannot cover. So you're, we are all created to live in God's presence, and the second thing is that God is calling you back to his presence, and he's made a place for you. And... The only way that the, there could be a place for sinners like us is because Jesus died on the cross for us. He's the one that made a way for us to come back to his presence, to live with him in his presence. So tonight, in order for you, some of you guys that feel separated from God, that feel distant, that feel like they've strayed away and they, they don't have a place in God, I want to let you know that God is welcoming you in He's welcoming you into his presence. And tonight, we have to recognize what are those things that have separated us from God? 
right? Because there's, there might be an addiction that you, you don't want to let go. There might be depression that you've been battling and you, you, you're struggling letting it go or it's a relationship, whatever is separating you from, from the fullness of God's presence, examine your heart and, and you're going to have to choose to give that up. God doesn't say, like, he doesn't command us to do that. He, he gives you the choice to do that. So today, um, as we're talking about God's presence and what separates us from his presence, I want to just talk about a couple things, a couple examples of when someone had to let go of what was separating them from God, what um, they had to sacrifice in order to, to live for God. And then when we look in the Bible, we look at Adam, oh, not, sorry, Abraham, I keep calling him Adam. Um, Abraham is one of the first acts of worship we see in Genesis where God asked him to sacrifice his son. You guys know that story? So he asked him to sacrifice his son. He goes up to the mountain. He says, we're going to go worship God. And God says, sacrifice your son. And why do you think, why does God ask him to sacrifice his son out of all things? I'm sure he had, I'm sure he was, he had, he was wealthy. He had some other things that were valuable that he could have sacrificed. But he asked him to sacrifice his son. And when I was thinking about that, God was just reminding me, like, you cannot sacrifice something that is not of value to you. Otherwise, it's not a sacrifice. It's not true worship unless it costs you something. So I can be like, okay, well, let me find something to sacrifice to God. Um, I have this. I have this piece of paper. I'll, give, I, I'll come to the altar with this. That's not going to mean anything to God because it means nothing to me. I, this means nothing to me. This is just trash. But I'm not going to give what's in here. Like, this is what's important to me. What's in this chest, I'll, I'm keeping this. This is too important to just sacrifice to God. And when we live like that, when we're like, okay, I'm going to keep this, but I'll give you the trash. I'll give you what I don't want. I don't want the depression. No, I don't want the, the suicidal thoughts. I don't want that, but I do want this relationship. Or I don't want, I don't want the, the constant anxiety. I don't want the, the bad thoughts. I don't want the negativity. I don't want that, but I'm not going to give you what's in here. This is precious to me, and I can't let this go. And that's the thing that is separating you from God's presence, right? It's not just, it's not the things you're willing to give up. It's the things you're not willing to give up that separates you from God's presence. So when you're thinking about that tonight, think of what, what is something that is of value to me that I, it's really hard to, to let go of. It could even be unforgiveness, right? It could be unforgiveness. It's hard to let go of this. Like I, I remember there was a time where I had unforgiveness towards someone. And I, I thought I forgave them because I said, I forgive you, like I, in my head, and I prayed. And I'm like, okay, I forgave them. But every time I went to the word of God, uh, and maybe you guys can relate to this, but I would say like, oh, yeah, that's so good. This person needs to hear that. And so every time I went to the word, it was always about the other person. It was never about me getting what I needed. And that's just an example of how that sin, that thing I was holding on to that I couldn't let go of, was getting in between me and God. It was separating me from God. And there was one time I did that, and God convicted me. He's like, if you forgave them, why haven't you let them go? And I was like, well, I thought I, I did. I, that's what forgiving means, right? He's like, no, you have to let them go. Because if you don't let them go and you keep repeating these things that, are, that they did or they said and how they need to hear this, then as long as you keep on doing that, that stands in between me, you, you hearing from me for you. So I, I remember that day, I, I just let it go. I was like, okay, God, I finally let them go. I cried and everything. Um, and I, I forgave that person. And I was like, God, I, I'm sorry that I let that person come between me and you, our intimacy. Like your, your devotional time with God, your worship time with God is your intimate time with God. Don't let anything get in the way of that, right? And we had to look at it like that. Unforgiveness is not something I want, but it was, it was something that I was holding on to. So we just got to examine what is, what is in this box for you? What is, what is something that you cannot give up? Because that's the one thing that you, God is asking you to give, right? He's not going to ask you to give something you're willing to give up. 
He's asking you to give this. So we looked at Abraham, but let's look at David. And um, it says in 2 Samuel 24, 24, it says, But the king replied to Araniah. I'm going to guess that's how you say it. It says, No, I insist on buying it, David said. For I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. So if, you're, if your offering doesn't cost you anything and it means nothing to you, it's not acceptable to God. God's not, God's not fooled by this. He's not going to be fooled to think this is what you actually are willing to sacrifice. He's not going to be fooled. He knows your heart, right? And he wants that over, the, over your, your, your sacrifice. He wants your obedience. He wants your heart. So if you're not giving something that is meaningful and valuable from your heart, you're not truly worshiping God, right? That's what worship is. It's not just about the feelings. I know that we all want to feel more peace when we leave this place. We want to feel more um, rest. We want to feel more strengthened when we leave um, a worship set. And those are all awesome things because that's what God provides in his presence. But we have to offer something to God too, right? It's all about, wor- worship is about him. When did, it, when did it become about us getting something from, from his presence? It's not about you. It's not about me. So we have to look at it like that. Like, okay, I'm here to worship God. I'm not here to just sit in the foyer or sit in the cafe when worship goes on because I'm not moved. Like, I'm here to, I'm here because God deserves my worship. God deserves my obedience to him. So I'm not going to sit I'm not going to sit out or I'm not going to do that because the music doesn't sound good and we're not perfect. We're we're here worshiping with you guys, but I want to just um acknowledge that like this is all about Jesus. All of our worship, all of our sacrifices for Jesus. And let's look at the poor the poor widow who gave a penny have you guys heard that story? She gave a penny. Everyone else was giving a, in large amounts, but she gave what she had. And it was just a penny. And it may look like it's a little bit, but it was everything that she had, right? She gave something that was of value to her because that was the only thing she had that was valuable to her. And, and the last person I want to look at is Jesus. Jesus showed us that we must lay our will down if we want to truly worship God. In Luke twenty two forty two, it says, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Right? And yes, he gave his life for us, but it wasn't easy. Sacrificing is not easy. It's not desirable all the time. We don't want to do it all the time. Jesus, his flesh, didn't want to do that. But he said, Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Right? So true worship is laying your life down. It's laying your, your, your will down to live for God. So worship is about laying your life down, laying your will down, and picking up God's. Right? It's not about a song. Again, it's not about chasing feelings and going from church to church because this worship is, gets me in the, in the zone. Like, that's not what it's about. Like, worship is not about that. It's about coming to the house of God and, we're, and you're going to your, your private place at your house, whatever it is, and your sacrifice is something that is of worth to you. It's laying your life down and saying, God, this, I, I lay my lifestyle down, I lay my will down, and I, I want to live for you. I want to live like you, right? So it is a lifestyle. And so we see this, this pattern in all of their worship, in, in Abraham's worship, in David's worship, in the, the widow's worship, in Jesus' worship, they gave something that cost them. So I want to ask you today, if you say you love God and you, you love to worship him, are you willing to sacrifice what, it mean, what is meaningful to you? Are you willing to sacrifice everything for him? Are you willing to give up everything for him? Because, and he's not asking you anything that's too hard. He's not asking you for anything that he hasn't already done for you. He sacrificed his life. He gave his only son 
so that you can live with him. He made this possible by giving everything. So all the least we could do, the response that we can give him is laying down our lives in exchange for him, right? So he's only asking us to do exactly what he's, he's told them to do. In Romans 12, 1 through 2, it says, So then, my friends, because, God's, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves. Offer yourself. I can't offer the person that, um, that I couldn't forgive. I'm like, yeah, this person needs to hear this. I offer them to you. Like that, <laughs> you can't offer anyone but yourself to God right? If you're married, if you're in a relationship, you can't offer them. You, ha- you can only offer yourself to God. And he, that's what he requires. He says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, right? As a living sacrifice it means our life is a sacrifice. We give our life to him, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is true worship. This is what? True worship that you should offer, so this is what God is asking you today. If you feel like you have been separated from, from God's presence, and it's hard sometimes to get in to, um, in into his presence, and it feels like it's, it's, it, he, God is distant. It's not because he's pushing you away. He didn't, ban, he didn't ban man. He banned the sin. So if you separate yourself from that, he, he welcomes you. He welcomes you as you are, and he'll cleanse you as you enter his presence, but are you willing to sacrifice it? He welcomes you, but you have to choose to sacrifice what is in this box, what is close to you, what is meaningful to you. If you want to be in his presence, if you want to experience the fullness of joy, because what is in his presence? There's healing in his presence. There's deliverance in his presence. There's forgiveness and salvation in his presence right? Everything you need is found in his presence. Jesus himself, that's where he dwells. He wants you to be with him. He wants to dwell in you as he dwells in, what does it say? Sorry, let me read that. Um, It says, remain in me as I remain in you. That's that's his, his plan for you. He wants to remain in you as you remain in him. So it's an exchange, right? It's like a marriage, a covenant, as we've been talking about. And so if that's you, we're going to continue to worship and sing. But I want to open up this, this altar. The altar team doesn't have to come up. But I want to open up this altar for those that, that, are, that are hurting and feel like they've been distant from God. And they need to lay something down that is of value to them. If you are ready to lay that down, I want to invite you guys up to the altar to do that. Because this is your space, this is your time, and it's no coincidence that you came tonight, if this is your first time, that, that we're talking about this. And it, it seems intense, it seems intense to lay down everything, but there's so, there's so much m- more that God has for you. I know it's hard, I know it's hard to let that go. I know, I know it satisfies you, I know that it feels good, and I know it's going to hurt to forgive that person, but it's worth it. What God has for you is so much better. So holding on to it is not worth it. And I'm not asking you to to do this if you're not ready, because it is a decision you have to decide. You have to decide to do this. I'm not commanding you to do this. God is God is beckoning you to do this. But if you, that's you and you feel like you're separated, I invite you down to this altar as we continue to sing and lay that down. I'm going to pray over everyone in this room. So if that's you, you guys could come up and worship. You guys could stand. You guys could come up to the altar. But we're going to pray. We're going to continue to worship. Father, we pray over everyone in this room tonight, God. I pray, Lord, right now that they would surrender their hearts to you tonight. They would surrender what is of value to you tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would come in this room. I pray, Lord, that you would break every chain in this room tonight. Break all the hindrance that is blocking them from from you, from your presence. We thank you, God, that there would be no separation between you and us, Father. We thank you, Father, that there there, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness 
in your presence, Father. So we ask, Lord, that you would come, Father, and cleanse our hearts of anything that is separating us from you and bring us back home. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus.